I developers should love Joomla and uh, to be honest uh, I use this name for the uh, presentation because I work with the company which is really into e-commerce and direct marketing and I know that if you see number seven your brain says that it's like the candle for your brain and uh, it will work in that way because our brain is very structured and it feels like if you see the number seven you will uh, try to uh, people are attached to numbers so you will remember that one and you may wondering why seven there is totally no clue about we can talk uh, about the many reasons why developers should love Joomla but the seven is just the number for the for the presentations uh, and it's also a promise of something specific if you see the number you will get from one to seven points uh, that will try to say you about the, about the reasons to love Joomla uh, few words about me, I'm uh, Bartomek Stuk, it's really hard to say uh, if you are foreigners, so people usually call me Bart. I work with the company uh, called Samuel Huset. It's a global group, we develop uh, a commerce platform for Joomla, dedicated one. We are located on the 14 markets. Uh, I'm the e-commerce senior developer, uh, the lead of the team. And you will find me on the Twitter and also on a Polish kind of website. Uh, I started with the company called Gravik Pro. It was a team club for Joomla. Uh, I worked there for several years creating modules and templates used wisely over the web. Then I uh, go to another company and there we develop extensions in-house. So we use Joomla as the core framework and uh, develop component uh, which is dedicated to our company business. Very, very strange e-commerce way of selling people things because we usually we sell coins to people and use Joomla to, to make a business on that one. And I've got the one question because the title says the developers. How many developers we've got in the room right now? Yeah. One, two, four, seven. <laughs> and who don't like to raise hands? Uh, <laughs> okay, the rules are one because uh, there is a, a little disclaimer at the same beginning. It not be a presentation like that way. <laughs> no, developers, developers, definitely developers, not. Developers. Uh, but uh, there is a warning, the presentation contains uh, a couple examples, so right now it's time, <laughs> if someone wants to leave, it's, uh, feel free. And uh, I want to highlight you uh, several things about, uh, about Joomla that I use every single day, That's, you can call it not the be not maybe not the really developer things, but uh, nice, nice tricks which you can use working with the Joomla code. And uh, the number one for me, uh, it's for the beginners, it's for, that's also for the for advanced. Welcome. Uh, you come before the first slide and you have to push the door very hard. Now that I know how to do that. Yeah. And, uh, so you come at the, at the disclaimer that the presentation will contain the code examples. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, something which is very easily in Joomla and uh, people useful for the beginners or, and for the advanced user is the number one on my list. It's override. Uh, namely, override everything. You can think about this in that way. That in Joomla, you basically are allowed to override everything. It's the so powerful CMS that allows you to not, you know, dig into core files and make dirty hacks uh, in the code, but allows you to overwrite some views, some part of modules, every part of the website, uh, doing it in the right way. So the developers think about that one, that it will be later used by the other devs, which want to overwrite some things. And I want to highlight you the things that you can overwrite in Joomla. Because in Joomla you can overwrite the modules, you can override the module, not only the module view, but also the module styles. You can override components view, uh, pagination, some small parts like the pagination, like layouts. That's really a nice part, like the offline page, the error page. Uh, people usually blame Joomla about using unused uh, old version of the jQuery or the old version of the bootstrap and so on. You can also override it using your template. There is no hacking in that way. You just need to upload the new files and that's all. And uh, I will show you briefly how to do that one with the overrides. So let's start from the simple one, the modules view. Every single modules view, uh, 
you can overwrite using your template. Uh, in every single template, you will find the directory called, called HTML. Or if it is not located on your template, you can create that one. Just create the new folder. And inside the HTML uh, directory, uh, you can see the name of, for example, the mod breadcrumb, where you can just copy paste original file from the mod breadcrumb and use totally custom one, custom code here. Yes. So uh, you use the default controller, you use default model. You are not worried about the, all the data. You just play with the layout of the module. Uh, because you cannot change its behavior, but you can play with the layout. You can style it in a different way. You can use different containers. You can delete some part of the code that you don't want to show to your uh, to your visitors, and uh, that's how you overwrite the uh, the module. You can write in that way every single Joomla core module, but also the custom ones. So every module you use, you can create the directory with the name of the module, put the original layout file. And in that way, you can create totally custom view dedicated to your website. So uh, that's super easy way to, to customize existing solution because sometimes you're looking for the different modules and not wondering how you can just customize the existing one. Yes, people, the extensions directory is full of search modules, full of news module, which show the news in a different way, but you can use the regular popular news module from Joomla and just override the layout if you are really into deep into the code. Yes? The other part is module styles. Uh, that's something that you can do in template that you use. And every single module in Joomla uh, has a kind of style. Style means how the module is rendered on the template, how the hidden is show, and uh, how the content of the module will be visible. Uh, in that way, you can also overwrite in Modus PHP 5 uh, some kind of render layout. For example, every single line has to start with mod chrome, then you use the underscore and your name. And for example, I use the mod chrome slash no, dot no, which means I don't want the hidden. I want just pure module content. So if you create the custom HTML module or any other one, it means that it will not render the module name. No matter what you switch on the module level to show hidden or, or to hide it, it will just just take the HTML content and throw it to the template without extra overwrite, which you need, later need to style and uh, and remove. In the same way, you can work with the components. Uh, the components uh, are more powerful than the modules because they provide different views. And for example, I use the com contents here. Like, I want to override the layout of the default article in Joomla. Uh, you just grab the file, place it here on the template, and now you've got the full access of the way how the regular article is visible in Joomla. No dirty hacking. You, up you update the Joomla and you don't need to worry about the changes because you store the information on the template. Uh, so it will not interfere with the, with the core Joomla file. The next one is pagination. Uh, I know that in, on many websites people change the pagination on the blog categories and on the list categories. Uh, and you can create on the template just file <coughs> called pagination PHP, where you can override the, the pagination. It's really nice because they provide you a basic uh, variables at the same top. So you can change only these three numbers to show more, more steps or less steps on the pagination level. Uh, remove totally the, uh, the buttons to jump to the last page or to the first page. So that's the way how you play with the pagination. But uh, with the latest step, we go through the more powerful features. It's called the layouts. Layouts, layouts are the small parts which are built in Joomla. And the developers of Joomla think that, OK, we've got so many places where we, for example, show the buttons in Joomla. Why we don't just they take this code which show the generic, generic button in Joomla and place it in one file which you can easily overwrite and it will change the layout of the all buttons in Joomla, for example, yes? So imagine how many of work you have if you want to change the color of the, no, maybe not the color, but just the way how the text appears on the buttons in every single part of the Joomla. Basically, you have to overwrite every single view in Joomla, but with the layout, you can just copy the layout button uh, it's located under, uh, on the left side you see the, the regular 
location. So if you install the Joomla, you see the directory called layouts. On this directory, there is a subdirectory called Joomla. And there you will find all the generic views from Joomla, which are used as the chunks of code. And uh, by copying this to the template, you can also override that uh, one uh, in the old places. What I did, I just installed the clean Joomla, like this one. Uh, on the left side, you see the welcome to blog, the typical article, which has the button on the bottom, a regular one. Uh, I just copied the layout of the button and changed the class of that one and moved the chevron from the left side to the right one. Because as you can see on the button, there is a chevron on the same beginning, I move it to the right. And this means that this layout, this blue button will be used every, sing every single place where the regular one should be shown. So, all blogs, all articles, uh, basically all every single button which is used in Code Joomla will be now in my, uh, my format. Yes? And then we come uh, to the offline and the error pages. Uh, there is something, offline and the error page is something which is uh, really powerful, but many people forget how to use it. For example, we've got the error page which show to the customer's products which he might be interested in. Not only just showing, sorry, we the page is not found and uh, the button is back to the home page. Maybe there is a time to, to keep the customer a little bit on the page and show it some kind of offer or show, it, show to him some different content which he might be interested in. Because people usually go to the error page from Google. Yes, you change the link, the old link still appears on the Google search results. People click on that one and they land it on the error page. Yes, you've got 100% bounce rate uh, of these people. They open the website and close. They see the error page. And, but you can arrange the error page in the way to show some kind of information. You can make it in a fancy way, you can show kind of offers, you can at least provide some email or something like that, more, more detailed information. And the same happened with the offline page. Uh, the regular offline page says, sorry we are offline, yes, the, the Joomla is under the maintenance or something like that. And that's all that, you, that you've got here. But you can play with this view. Also in template, you just need to co create the file called error.php and the offline PHP, And that's the way how you can modify also the, the layout view uh, in that one. And the same happened with the, uh, with the CSS files and the JavaScript files. Because people blame blaming Joomla about using old bootstrap version all bootstrap styling, unupdated uh, jQuery and so on, but you can always override it. Override it means that every single view will load your library. Uh, you just need to create uh, uh, the directory called media in your template, but there is a little warning. So this override works only for the media files when the files are loaded using J HTML uh, part of code. Uh, if the developers do it in that way, the first line is wrong. Don't never hard code the path to the to the libraries based on media .js. Joomla create a nice line for that one. Just write jht jhtml uh, double dot underscore and script and provide the path. This allows other developers to override this file. Yes. So uh, you allow people to choose, so they have choice. If you use the hard-coded path, there is no way to that one. Um, you, if you develop something in Joomla or try to optimize the website, you probably see the problem that Joomla loads so many JavaScript files and if you want to merge them into one, uh, there is a, really a bottleneck to, to delete the original files from the template uh, and uh, create your own ones. Uh, Usually it goes in that way. So that's the code which just delete all the JavaScript files from the template. Uh, and that's the code which works since Joomla 3.7. Because at Joomla 3.7 the developers create something like that. If you want to delete all the scripts, just write this line. And uh, as the parameter provide the script. Uh, and this will clean the head data from all the scripts located uh, in, uh, in Joomla. Yeah, so that's really, really well done. And uh, my hobby is always if I find a new function, I usually dig a little bit. And so I 
of course, just try to check what this function did. So it, you can also not only remove the scripts, you can also provide the parameter as null. This means that it will clean everything, really everything. The meta description, the meta title, the custom scripts, the inline scripts. It will just leave the template head empty. But if you provide the parameter like scripts or style sheet, style sheet it will clean only this part from the template. So uh, you can clean whatever part you mean, but by just using one line, using the J document, yes. Uh, and uh, that one we goes from the first part, which was the, the the overriding. And now I want to focus a little bit about the J layouts. It's really powerful feature. Not so many people use that one, as I see from the extensions. And uh, it's a really really great feature, which I will try to introduce you. It comes. It appears with the Joomla with the tags, so the developers think, the Joomla, people who develop Joomla think, okay, we want to add the tags, but the tags will be not only for the article, they will be also for the uh, contact, they will be also for the categories, and also for some other views, so they realize that, okay, we need to modify so many places, because we want, we want to add the tags, everything will be tagged right now in Joomla, yes? And then they come with the idea of about the, the layouts. So the layout is the chunk of code, which you place on the one place, uh, then create the instance, and by typing magic render, it will just show the tags on that place, uh, like the regular ones, yes? And uh, the item tags, the, the element with the item tags is the, is the part which fit the data. So basically, if you want to use the J layout, you just need to create the layout file by typing somewhere new J layout file, and uh, name your layout and then fit the data with the fit the function with some data. So here there is a, a data to, to provide the layout to the data. And how it works? Uh, Joomla is quite clever uh, and uh, it supports override everything as I said on the previous point and it also supports override in layout. So first of all it always check with the template. If there is file on the template which override the default layout, let's use from the template. If not, let's look on the current component. Where I am, if I am on the com content, I will look for the com content layout for the file that I want to load. If I will not find the file there, I will uh, look for the, for the template override files, the general one. And later, the last point is to look at the regular Joomla layout. So that's the last point. That's why you have so many ways to override default things in Joomla. And it goes in that way, yes? So the template always <laughs> first. Template is always the most important one. And of course, you can force different components. For example, I want to lay out, I want to display the tags from the conf fields. Uh, by providing the last parameter, I change the path of looking the, uh, at the file. So uh, I always look at the configs component. Providing this name and then it change the path. Uh, the conclusion is that the template always wins. Uh, the fact is that the, the term, everyone can install the template in Joomla and the, by the template you can override everything. So that's the most important part and something that if I want to remember one thing from this slide deck, that's the fact that the template always wins. Uh, how we use that one? Uh, in our example, we've got the e-commerce platform used on 14 markets with the different languages. And uh, we need to provide uh, some parts of the, of the website, which is slightly different per market. It's usually business specific changes uh, because people on the different places are, get used to different layouts. And we use this one using the, uh, the language tag because it also supports the suffixes. So you don't need to split code based on your language. You just create the language file with the proper name. It's super useful when you have a page based from left to right and right to left support uh, because you can just provide the suffix left to right and this will load the file called tags.ltr.php not the different ones, so it supports the suffixes. And we use it that way that we provide the language tag. So for every single installation, we some parts of code we split and the people may get the different views. Okay, the so number three is 
plugins and the rendering flow. There's something that if I start when I start working in Joomla, I get used to WordPress way to organize some kind of data. On WordPress, you've got the hacks. Uh, you can just uh, provide some kind of information using the the plugins, and I'm looking for something different for something similar to Joomla. And uh, it appears it is the Joomla application execution order. It's something that uh, have several requests, like on after initialize when the uh, system plugins are loaded. Then we've got something on after road. And uh, it means that the routing is done. So we find the active menu item, the menu, the active menu is marked. Then we've gone on after dispatch, which allows us to uh, to access to the component. And the last but not least is uh, uh, on after render, when we've got the entire HTML ready and we can access the HTML, which will be in a min in a second through to the browser. Yes. And there is a way to write a plugins without the plugins in Joomla. I don't know that people, th there is no one documented that one. I, I go for the entire Joomla documentation to find this part because they, there is a tutorial how to write a plugin for Joomla, but uh, really no one cares that you can write a plugin without the plugin. So uh, you, on your part of, of the template or the component, you can just use the dispatcher, uh, JDispatcher, then register your task and uh, this small function, as you probably see, take the entire body of the page and uh, then modify it by adding some uh, emojis and the text. How it works? It works in that way that at the footer, because I take the entire body of the page, yes, and then add some clapping hands and join the on text. It's super easy to troll your friends. If you paste somewhere this code, no one will never remove that one because it doesn't exist on the template. It doesn't exist on any layout. You just take the entire HTML, really dump, provided by the Joomla, and later just include the text. So it will appear on every single page. Uh, and it will be super hard to find how you trick uh, browser to, to show that one. Uh, the number four is the JSON support. Uh, I will talk about two ways of uh, using uh, using JSON in in Joomla. Uh, first of all, it's a really regular way because the Joomla have built-in support for the for the JSON responses. If you create some kind of Ajax uh, tags task or your component to work uh, in an Ajax way, you create the request. I really, really, this way is the best way to provide the answer from the component to the view in Ajax way, because that's something which is built in Joomla. And the advantage of that is usually you have to provide some kind of feedback from the, from the task. If you use the JResponseJSON class, you always get several data. First of all is the success. It means that if the request was done and the controller answered properly and you've got the feedback, later on you've got the message. Something that you can provide the main message and it's really convenient because you use the JText so you can provide the message from the language file to the JavaScript which we probably know it's not so easy. Then we've got the messages. So if some errors occur, imagine that you try to register user in the Ajax way and the validation says your first name is too short. How do you show the, how do you show the information to the customer, uh, for, to your visitor, that you cannot do that one? It, the J response based, JSON is the only way, because if Joomla try to enqueue some kind of data, it will be send you with the response from the J response JSON. And the other part, which I really like about the JSON, is uh, not the dirty hacking, but the clever way to, to, to use the JSON. That's Joomla view. That's something that we develop. Uh, really internal tool to build some sequence builder to build uh, very simple pages. And uh, it works like the rich application uh, because it allows you to, to play with the interface, uh, choose the data and uh, and to work in that way. Yeah, so basically you've got one app, you are on the view, you can modify some many, many things. And uh, how we do that one without the REST API? Because there is no REST API. We use the Vue.js here, but there is no REST API inside. So we have to store somewhere the information. And uh, I do it always in that way. So there is a hidden field. 
uh, which stores entire JSON. And Joomla, if you save the form, the JSON will go to the database. When the page reloads, you get the JSON once again, so you just parse it. So it is like the fake REST API using the, the regular Joomla way, but uh, you can create this, this kind of configurator using just only one form field. There is no hacking in that one. There is only one field which I just hide on the CSS. It stores the entire configuration. Every single time I make changes in this interface, I store the data in the field once again. People, when they click to save, it goes to the database. Then the page reloads and I can redraw everything, yes? Number five, five from seven, it's the modules. Uh, when I start mm, my story with Joomla, I, of course, uh, the first thing that I write myself is the module and I think, oh, that's super easy and super convenient. And uh, then I start to developing the, uh, the components. And that's really famous Paul Locker quote, uh, that uh, sometimes you have to lose yourself writing another component view to, to see the power of the modules, yes. And uh, because we focus so much on, uh, on writing component view or writing something advanced that I miss the possibilities of the modules. One of my tasks was uh, to create a detailed dashboard uh, about the ECOS platform. Uh, the view that we think, okay, we need to develop just the, another component view when we gather all the data, show the statistics, draw the nice graphics and so on. Yes, looks like a lot of development. But then I realized that, oh, maybe, maybe just, just to write a simple modules of the Joomla, which we can use on the dashboard, which is already after you logged in to, to, to the Joomla backend. Uh, the good part of the module is that they are available on the Evo and the offline pages too. So uh, if you overwrite the template, you can even publish the module on the offline page. And uh, sometimes it's, it's even not necessary to have the module position to render the module. Uh, for example, we do it in that way. That we've got just the, the regular Joomla backend. And uh, just by... There are, that's one module, not eight different ones. That's just one module which displays the basic data. We show the graph, the graph is interactive. And uh, we do it with free one day coding instead of write external com extra component view uh, to show that one we've got the uh, integration with the external API, we read the open rate and the bounce rate of the people from Mandarin statistics. <coughs> we get the amount of the money that we earn from the, last, from the two day and the last seven days. And that's the view, as you can see, the basic view after you log into Joomla. Something that we, because the modules work on the backend as well. You can just create the module which is only available on the backend and publish this only for the backend. So that's the super nice feedback for the customer. Every single time we update the documentation, when you create something new for the customer, so we just create them a module on the backend, say, hey, that's something new. Maybe you want to look at that one and uh, just play with it a little. And Number six from seven, it's the command line interface. Uh, that's really for the advanced user. Uh, I know that Akiba uses it a lot in the, in the extensions. Uh, and it's probably useful when you do some really business things on your website. But I just want to sign that Joomla is not only the CMS, Joomla is a framework as well, which may work without like the visual output. So you can just run the Joomla from the command line. Everything will, everything will be initiated, but there will be no visual way of showing that one. And uh, we use the command line interface uh, to do a lot of things. Because first of all, we collect the logs. We've got the, our table which collect the logs. And once per day, we just write a task which go through the table, find the errors which occurs the most and send us the, to the email. So we as the developers know what's going on if, if there is some kind of strange errors appears uh, in, uh, in a high way, we see that one. And all that you have to do is, after Joomla installation, you've got the directory called CLI, SNE. If you put a file called, for, called amazing script there, you can just write the function and you can invoke that one uh, from the console of the server. So you can just write the CLI and name of your function and it will work. So the Joomla will be rendered, everything will be done, but without the visual output. And how we can use that one? Uh, we use the cron jobs. The cron jobs which, uh, uh, first of all, sometimes read the third-party APIs. 
Because we write the job, we write the task in Joomla, then on the clone we specify that just found this function and we've got access to the Joomla, so that's great. We can uh, collect the Joomla logs, we can clean up the logs, uh, we gather statistics from the Joomla sessions. For example, abandoned baskets, abandoned payments, we know all about the customers, we store this on the Joomla table, so we've got the integration to that one. As I said, we've got the reporting, we just send the emails. If something really wrong happened, uh, I've got the email that, okay, we've got so many logs from today about uh, this part and this part, and maybe it's better to look at that one uh, before we will get a serious problem on the production. We integrate with the third party API. For example, we fetch the data from Mandrill and for the payment providers as well, uh, using the cron jobs and the, and the Joomla framework uh, CLI. And we also import and export data for the external services like the data warehouse uh, and, uh, and so on. And the last part, because we are, that's the number six. So only, as I promised, there will be a seven things which you should love about the Joomla and uh, the number seven that I want to share today with you is the is the community uh, <laughs> yeah really really is the, it's the, it's really important for the developers to, to have a community and there are some parts of, of the Joomla community which are nice for, for, for me for example because we are uh, it's more than just the CMS it's all about the people that we meet here that we meet on the Joomla days uh, and uh, which is nice for me, it's the fact that the community is big, but not too big, really. So you know that you find the answer on the internet, on the stack overflow of the Joomla.org, uh, but the, your sign might be significant for the entire Joomla project because no, there are not so many people here like in the, in the WordPress conferences and so on. So that's a really big advantage for me that uh, the community is, uh, is have a lot of passionate people who want to learn, who want to share the knowledge and, uh, and that's really important for them that they know that they can go to the Joomla day, go to the, the gym beyond, meet the people that they know, they know the Joomla better than, the, than them and ask them about the problems. Uh, because usually we struggle with the same issues. Uh, no matter what kind of business we've got, we see the same advantages and the same disadvantages of the system that we use. Uh, so it's really want to, to share. And uh, that's the number seven of the facts. And I don't want to only just say thank you right now. That's all from me for today. Someone have any questions, or we can just yeah. Uh, have you found the way to work with plugins and layouts uh, at the same time? Uh, if you uh, use plugins, yeah. then you need to distribute layout in the plugin folder. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Basically, you can, uh, pass the base pass for the layout, but it will never be all right with the template. Yes. Yes, yeah, so if you create the layout, you always have the possibility that someone override it on the template. Yeah, but... Uh, no, 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 if you use a layout in the plugins, yeah. then it never will be overrided in the template. Yeah, if you force that one, it will be never override because the it, it depends what kind of plugin you create. If you create the system plugin, which work on after render, it says that everything is done on Joomla right now. So uh, the template works, the HTML is ready, yes? The only thing is to show, it to, the, to show it to the customer. If you write the system plugin, you always get the last chance to modify something. That's what I did on the, with clapping hands and JNB on text. So uh, over the, the plugin is the most powerful uh, part of the Joomla because it may overwrite basically everything. So it depends on what kind of plugin you use because some plugins are involved before sooner, some plugins are involved later. It depends on the uh, of the event that you use. For example, the user login plugin is involved when the user logs in. Yes, the system plugin, like the after vendor, is the last one. So then you can manipulate everything. Uh, sorry, but the question was yes? uh, if you uh, distribute the layout with a uh, plugin. It would be placed in a plugin folder, yes? 
No, in the plugin you have to use or in template or in a directory in your in some kind in some components in layout subdirectory because if you don't want to modify the original one so you do not you will not include them in the plugins in the plugin layout because the j layout you as you saw on the example i mean i maybe come back to this slide because it's clear a little bit the the case because you don't provide the path to the plugin uh, as you can see here, if you use the J layout, because we're talking about this, this kind of layouts, yes? The J layout. You will not provide here any path. Uh, you can add uh, use function add include path. Yeah, you can add include path, yeah? Or you can uh, use J layout helper. Yeah, yeah J layout helper, which is. Which... sort of argument that is uh, base path. But yeah. it will never be overriding. Yeah, yeah, I think that, yeah? You have one option in that case, which is uh, in the installation package, and create a package and install your layout files directly in the layouts folder of Duma. And then you can call the, the you can do that call instead of doing that on the tax, you can go by plugin, by yeah, by the entire path, uh, yeah. And then it will be overridden. But, but you need to create a more complex package because you need to install a file with your layout and then your plugin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, template overrides and layout overrides are really, really nice. <laughs> uh, because uh, if you look at Joomla, you want to override your core. Yeah, that's the best way of overriding everything in Joomla because yes. you don't need to. Because my we don't touch the Joomla core, it's not allowed. Yeah. So uh, if something in the core changes, it's because there's a fault or something in it. Yeah. What's your way in. Uh, don't, uh, how do you see all the changes? Yeah, I, I, will, your, um, I will show you how I work that way. Because I work in the template company, uh, team company, and we have to upload Joomla regularly with the templates. And uh, that's something that I do. I always download the previous package of Joomla and the current one and use some merge tool uh, for that one. A diff tool? Yeah, a diff tool. Yeah, I compare. Uh, path by path, it's really strange when they release the new version every single year and they change the copyrights yes. and the name change. I've got the records for that one. If you want, I can share that one uh, later because I've got the records which just strip the comments uh, from the files because the dates are usually in the comments, but I do it in a manual way. Uh, but the good part is that on the layouts, usually there are not, there is no logic. There is no, you don't need to worry that you will uh, create a, a security breach in Joomla if you override the layout because there's no logic behind. The controller and the model do the magic. Oh, they only provide the data, which is the way to how to show it to the customer, know how it behaves. Yes, so... Uh, about the controller. Yeah. Um, once I met this customer, they needed to stay to change something and the only thing he could do was change a controller. I don't want to do it. So what I did was I used the template override, <laughs> I copied the controller, gave yeah. it a new name, and I in the template override in the in bottom I said, I'll include path or something like sorry and so I triggered my own uh, controller. I, I usually do the same and uh, just to be uh, to be more clever I uh, inherit my class from the original component. So not just copy paste the entire one. I just write my own one which extends okay. the original one. Yes. Then I write the function name of the same uh, name, uh, write parent yeah. the same class and then modify something and just return my values. So that's the probably the easiest way to, to do that one. And if they change the, the core model, uh, yeah. it changes as well. Yeah, you don't have to change because you overwrite only part of the function and you invoke the original task. Yes, yeah. so uh, no no struggle with that one. That's the, that's the way to avoid work, uh, to extend for the original files. Yeah? So are you saying you're adding a new controller? Yes. For instance, the uh, Yuna has a contact form, and if you want to add the IP address of the person sending an email, you can't do it with a learned layout override. Right? Yeah. So you have to include something in the okay. uh, controller. So if you come, there is a controller called maybe contact.php. I copied it, and I just added a new line to insert an IP address in the email message. Uh, he just gave a better option, okay. and this is the way uh, with the template override you trigger your own controller. Okay, great. Yeah. Thanks. Some other questions? Yeah. Um, just a general question because I'm not a quality developer. So 
maybe. Um, what happens if a security fix comes out because of a, of a big problem and you have an override? Do you have to be aware of Yeah, the, the, something, the things that you override are the layouts. So something that show the data to the customer and the entire logic of all the bug fixes in Joomla are in getting the data or reading the data. Or okay. So you basically are the la on the last step, so only the presentation layer. There are no, no bugs there. In 99.99% okay. there is always something in the controller or in the module or in the plugins, but you only play with the, how, it's, how it is visible to the customer. So you don't need to worry that you create a security breach on, uh, on, on Joomla by overriding that one, yes? They, they are clever guys. They allow you to override only things that show the data, not the, the things that play with the data. And Because later you, you just by installing the fake template, you can just create the, the hole on the entire system, yes? It's not, it's not possible with that one. Okay. Even if you try to do that one, it's really hard from view to access to, the, to something on the model and on the controller. So it's really hard to hack that one in that way. Okay. We're done with the ask question. Yeah. So thank you once again for the discussion as well. And